एस चांद प्रेजेंट्स एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम So welcome back to the second part of this today's video. So in first part we have understood how to write a linear differential equation of second order with constant coefficient. What do we mean by the general solution of the differential equation? So the general solution consists of two parts. One is complementary function, another is particular integral. So complementary function is the solution corresponding to the homogeneous part of the differential equation and particular integral is the solution corresponding to the non-homogeneous part of the differential equation that is right hand side that is Rx we have taken in the general form of the differential equation. So now we will focus on the strategy to find out the complementary function of a differential equation. So for more details on the methods, you can refer to the book from S. Chand Publishing, details of which are given in this portion and link is given in the description box. So to find out complementary function, to find complementary function, it has already been told to you that the it will consist of two uh, arbitrary constants. So two arbitrary constants were C1 and C2. So let us say that the complementary function will take this form C1 y1x plus C2 y2x where y1 and y2 are the two solutions the linear superposition of which will give us the complementary function and now our aim is to find out this y1 and y2. This separately will also satisfy the homogeneous part of the differential equation and the linear superposition will also uh, satisfy the uh, homogeneous part of the differential equation. So to find out this y1 and y2, we need to write down the characteristic equation for the given differential equation. So let us talk about the given differential equation. So it is a0 y double dash plus a1 y dash plus a2y is equals to 0 and remember since complementary function has to be the solution corresponding to the homogeneous part therefore right hand side will always be given uh, written as 0 this one now we need to write down the characteristic equation for this so we will write down the characteristic equation for this to write down the characteristic equation, we will replace this y with uh, the derivatives of y with lambda. So y will be replaced with lambda raised to the power 0, that is 1, y dash will be with lambda and y double dash with lambda square. So then the uh, characteristic equation becomes a0 lambda square plus a1 lambda plus a2 is equals to 0. So this becomes the com characteristic equation to find out the complementary function of the linear differential equation with constant coefficient. Now since it is a second order polynomial, so it will have two roots. One will be, let us say one is lambda 1, another is lambda 2. So these two uh, uh, solution will be giving us these two solutions y1 and y2. Corresponding to lambda 1, we will write y1x. Corresponding to lambda 2, we will write y2x. Uh, the y1 and y2x will be depending on the solution of this characteristic equation. So if we find out the root of this different, uh, this polynomial, so it will be minus of a1 plus minus under root a1 is square minus 4 a0 a2 divided by 2 a0. They will be the roots of this polynomial. Now this discriminant is going to play a big role in deciding that what will be the type of roots. The type of roots may be real, they may be complex or they may be same. So depending on this discriminant, the roots will be decided. So first case will be, there will be three cases of course. So case one is let us say that a1 square minus 4a0 a2 is greater than 0. If this greater than 0, then we can say that the roots will be, roots are 
real and they will be distinct in nature. Roots are real and distinct. Since they are real and distinct, so they can be taken as say lambda is equals to lambda 1 and lambda is equals to lambda 2. These two are the values which are real and distinct in nature. And depending on these two values, the complementary part of the solution will be written. So yc for such a differential equation will be written as c1 e raised to the power lambda 1x plus c2 e raised to the power lambda 2x. So this becomes our y1 x and this becomes our y2 x. Okay, so that's how it will be written. Remember one thing, whenever we are writing down the solution, we have to be very cautious about our dependent variable and independent variable. In, this, in the differential equation, in the example which we have taken, y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. And therefore, this side we have written e raised to the power lambda 1x plus c2 e raised to the power lambda 2x. If suppose the differential equation would have been in terms of t, then this will not be written as x, this will be replaced by t. So we need to take care about our uh, independent variable. So this is case 1. Now case 2 is that when this discriminant becomes 0, that is a1 is square minus 4a0 a2, it becomes 0. So both the roots will be equal, that is you, we will be left with a1 over 2a0. So both the roots are equal, so lambda 1, this, this equals to lambda 1 and lambda 2. Now here we need to understand one more concept that this y1 and y2 they have to be linearly independent because it should form a basis. So when they are they were different uh, they were real and different so distinct uh, then they were forming the lean, linear independent pair. But now when the, the two roots are equal then they will become linearly dependent. So we need to avoid the situation because we need to write the complementary function in such a way so that this y1 and y2 have to be linearly independent. Now how, what to do that? First of all, we need to understand how to check whether they are linearly independent or not. There is a guarantee that when the, the values of lambda are real and distinct, y1 and y2 will definitely be linearly independent. And if we want to check it mathematically, we need to check it by Ronskin. So Ronskin is a method which needs to, uh, uh, which will decide whether the, uh, the solution y1 and y2, they are linearly independent or not. So y1x and y2x, they will be linearly independent. linearly independent if the determinant of y1, y2 and y1 dash that is first derivative of y1 and y2 is not equals to 0. This is called uh, Ronskin. So this can also be represented as w and if we solve this discriminant this becomes y1, y2 dash minus y1 dash y2 and this should not be 0 for linearly independent. Now in this one we need to find out the linearly independent solution. So when this lambda 1 lambda 2 becomes same, so one solution we already got y1 x. So y1 x will be e raised to the power lambda 1 x. Now the uh, struggle is to find out y2 x. So y2 x can be written as x e raised to the power lambda 1 x. We need to write lambda 1 because both are equal. So the second solution will be written as x e raised to the power lambda 1 x and now there will be a guarantee that these two solutions will be linearly independent. So we can check this also. So if, if it is e raised to the power lambda 1 x e raised to the power x e raised to the power lambda 1 x this is lambda 1 e raised to the power lambda 1 x and it is e raised to the power lambda 1 x plus x lambda 1 e raised to the power lambda 1 x which can be seen quite clearly that it is not coming out to be 0. Therefore, if y1 and y2 are written in this way for 
equal roots of the characteristic equation, then the solution will be written as that is yc will be written as c1 e raised to the power lambda 1x plus c2 x e raised to the power lambda 1x. So, that is how the complementary function in such a situation will be written, right. Then we will be, we are having one more situation that is case 3. So, case 3 is that if the discriminant that is a1 is square minus 4 a naught a2 is a2 is less than 0. In such a case, the, the two roots will be imaginary, the complex conjugate. So, they will be complex conjugate. So, we need to understand how to write down the solution uh, for this complex conjugate situation. So, that means that lambda will be written as alpha plus minus iota beta. So, that lambda 1 is alpha plus iota beta and lambda 2 is alpha minus iota beta. In such a situation, the, the, the complementary function will be written as C1 and let us try to write down in the similar lines uh, how we have written it for real and distinct roots. So, it is e raised to the power alpha plus iota beta x plus C2 e raised to the power alpha minus iota beta x and we can take this common e raised to the power alpha x can be taken common and we need to expand this. So, it becomes C1 cos beta x plus iota sin beta x plus C2 cos beta x minus iota sin beta x. This we all know how to expand the, com uh, the complex numbers. So, it can be written as e raised to the power alpha x and let me say another variable d1 cos beta x plus d2 sin beta x. So, that is how the complementary function of a complex conjugate root will be written. That is here the real part and imaginary part will be written with cos and sin. So, here y1 will be e raised to the power alpha x cos beta x and y2 is e raised to the power alpha x sin beta x. We cannot neglect this e raised to the power alpha x from y1 and y2. This has to be uh, included in both the parts. Right? So, we have discussed how to get the complementary function in all three cases when the characteristic equation has real and distinct roots when they, the roots are same and when the roots are complex. So, instead of uh, mem just memorizing this complex conjugate uh, case, we need to remember only one case that is real and distinct that is e raised to the power lambda 1 x will be y 1. So, similarly we have written here e raised to the power alpha plus iota beta x for y 1 and e raised to the power alpha minus iota beta x for y 2 and then we have simplified them to write down the complementary function for the linear differential equation of second order with constant coefficients. So, in this video we have learned how to write down the general form of linear differential equation of second order with constant coefficients. We have learned what do we mean by general solution of a linear differential equation of second order with constant coefficients and then we have understood all the three cases to write down complementary function of a linear differential equation of second order with constant coefficients. So, for more details on the methods, you can refer to the book from H. Chand Publishing, details of which are given in this portion and link is given in the description box. I am sure you must have liked the video because we have studied a very complicated method in a very simplified way. So, please do like, share and subscribe and press the notification bell for the notification of upcoming videos. Thank you very much. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.